Situated on a gently sloping hill where their grape vines cascade down to Seneca Lake, Lakewood Winery has some of the oldest vines in the area and is one of the largest producers. Chris Stamp is the grandson of the dentist who originally purchased the land and planted the first grapes. Well, my grandfather who bought this farm in 1951 was out working in the spring, working in the vines. And it was a nice spring day and he got into apparently a nest of uh, yellow jackets and they got up the pant leg of his overalls and of course they started stinging him and when that starts happening you do everything you can to get away and so he started unbuckling and throwing clothes off and running through the vineyard to get away from the bees. Well as it turned out that year ended up being a fantastic vintage. They connected the dots, run through the vineyard naked, great vintage, so it became something of a, a legend that if you run through the naked uh, the vineyard naked in the spring, you'll have a good vintage. Lakewood has control over all aspects of production, from growing to crushing to bottling and labeling. And in 92, we built this room, and this became our uh, main tank room. Just got in a new counter pressure filler here that we haven't even installed it yet, but that's so we can bottle carbonated wine. And what will be the first wine that you produce? It'll be our Candale. Candale. Yeah, Candale. It's a, it's a sparkling white wine. So okay. it basically makes what lightning storms make. Uh -huh. So we use that for sanitizing spouts and cleaning barrels and things like that. And then a corker, which draws a vacuum beneath, beneath the cork just before the cork is through. And then bottles come down here. Uh, and then they start to get dressed. So they put a capsule on them, shrink the capsule on them. They come around here, get the label here on the labeling machine. My favorite barrels for the Chardonnay are the New York State Oak that was a, a project that we started with uh, Cooper down in Pennsylvania. We timbered out the wood, aged it three years outdoors, and then started making these fantastic barrels. We were just enamored with the New York Oak, and uh, it, it does add to that sense of terroir. And now they're starting to say, yeah, there's differences. You know, it's a big country. Why would oak in Minnesota be the same as oak in Missouri? You grow in a colder climate, it's got tighter grain, it's going to give you different results. So now they're starting to label some Virginia oak or New York oak or Minnesota oak. Frankly, the French oak barrels by far and away the best for Pinot, but not necessarily so for other wines. It's like, you know, is oregano good in spaghetti? Yeah, but is it good in, you know, I don't know, uh, macaroni and cheese? No. So you, you kind of got to pick your spices, and oak is kind of a spice in my 